Welcome to Try This at Home. I'm Cliff Bumgardner. And I'm Harrison Stewart. This week, we are talking about Mythbusters Season 1, Episode 6. Our myths are Barrel of Bricks, Pissing on the Third Rail. That's how it's officially listed on IMDb. Hmm. Who knows why? And Eel Skin Wallet. This episode first aired October 10th, 2003, and is directed, as always, by Peter Reese. Harrison, what would you think about this one? This is the most... Looney Tunes esque episode, yes, yet it's got um, a cartoon vibe. Yes, a lot of uh, a lot of a lot of Wiley Coyote action in this one. <laughs> Wiley Jamie, ah, uh, Wiley Wiley Buster. Oh, very. Uh, really he, good to see Buster back though. I was as soon as he popped up, I was excited to see him again. An early death. Yes. <laughs> uh, uh, in this episode, I, I I didn't know that that Buster was going to be taken out of commission so soon. And they're so happy about it, and I'm just like, boys, you don't know what you have ahead. You, you are going to no put idea. this dummy through so much crap this poor for the next twenty years. This poor poor dummy. Yeah, I like this episode. I thought there, I thought all three myths were fun. And I, my biggest note was it felt like this episode kind of shows how far season one has come, mm. where in each of these myths, I felt some similarities in terms of the stories themselves and maybe the way they did certain things back to the pilot episodes, mm -hmm. but it was done better. Yeah. Like there was, they, they, they get, we'll get into this with Barrel of Bricks, but they get into like, this is, you know, a real story. Did it happen or not? They really address that factor a lot. But I didn't feel nearly as kind of like left out in the cold by the results or by the way that they they walked through it as I did in some of those early episodes. So it felt like they were using some treading the same ground, but I thought they did it better overall. Yes and no. I thought that the I mean overall, yes, but the the this one, similar to last week's, I felt had a bit of the I think you said like these are the myths that the is it like undecided? What is what is the? Oh yeah, later would be plausible. Plausible, yeah. yeah. Uh, I felt like this was the first myth, especially was another one that I was like, so y it can happen? Yeah. No, actually, you know, I was like, yeah. wait, you've been okay. Well, yeah, it is funny how they clearly in these early episodes, like they knew that they needed something, but they didn't have it yet, and so if they didn't have busted, they would kind of get to the end and go. <sighs> <laughs> that was kind of our it. next myth. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. I was like moving uh, on. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, actually, it can't be true because it's not. Anyway, <laughs> yeah. I did notice. I thought this is kind of a, a small thing, but I noticed throughout this episode, I felt like it was shot better. Mm. I feel like you can tell that they, as a, like as a crew and as a show, are just getting better at the way they stitch things. We noted last week that like, oh, wow, this is really neat that they're doing the myth setup out on location. They yeah. did it from that from that oil can collection <laughs> place mm -hmm. in the last episode. This episode, all three of them, I think, were set up from a different location. Yeah. Like they really are, they're starting to expand as a production and expand that world out a little bit in ways that feels really, really fun. Yeah. And I, I like that. Like the show keeps getting bigger as it goes on. And we know that it, at some point, I have not looked ahead, but we're going to get more Mythbusters coming into the show. And we're going to get a lot of, you know, a expansion. And it's cool to see six episodes in that's already feels like it's happening which is which is really cool yeah i mean especially th this was the first time that i felt buster was around for a significant period of time and properly utilized and they called him buster like yeah. repeatedly and to his face yes uh so i i guess it's it's kind of official yeah it was nice that they actually used a crash test dummy to test crashes as opposed mm. to we're gonna put him on a toilet <laughs> yeah wait which i mean no don't get me wrong uh, some toilet action is not bad we we get some toilet action in this one as well <laughs> i'm gonna clip that and just that's every time you call me some toilet action's not bad that hey that's that's how you know it's me <laughs> myth one barrel of bricks so this one it takes a little bit of setup because it's not so much a a question being asked as it is a story that's being told but basically they tell the story of this guy who was working on a building doing some either deconstruction or construction it wasn't quite clear but he uh was hanging onto a rope that was attached to a barrel of bricks 
And the barrel is so heavy that when the barrel falls, it actually jerks him up in the air, being propelled by the barrel over a pulley system and all this very wily Coyote stuff, as you said. The barrel then breaks on the ground, sending it skyrocketing back up. The guy falls down. They bounce off of each other. He hits the ground. And then the final indignity, the barrel lands on his head. And if you're going, well, what is the myth? Uh, same I guess, I guess did that, that happen is, yeah yeah <laughs> could that, Can happen? that happen yeah. yeah um and I was I was kind of a hard no I just didn't think like there were so many steps and also when they explained it I was like I, I I'm not seeing it uh yeah. then when they showed it like graphically I was like okay I get that. That seems very cartoonish to me. It was. So I, I spoiled this one for myself a little bit just because I do remember this and mm-hmm. I remember it for the the reasons that we talked about a few episodes ago with uh, the biscuit bazooka, where it's super thrilling when something works exactly as described. And yeah. I remembered that in this episode. But when, so when they were then setting it up and they were telling the story, I was like, they are going into some extreme detail because they know that they're going to pay this off. Yes. <laughs> like it's going to end up happening. That, that they're going to make it happen in some way. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I did think even in the setup of this myth, uh, Dr. Witham, mm-hmm. the folklorist was really great. And I noticed that they now have her at M5 Yeah, in some of like actually filming in the shop. And there was some really good footage of her. She She's is, in the house now. She continues. She's tenured. To, yes. Yeah. She continues to be like just a really wonderful extra part of the show. Yes. And I just, even at the head of this myth and the head of this episode, I thought she was awesome. Yeah. Um, both this one and the next one, which again, we have two very cartoony ones Yeah, back to back. Uh, I don't know. I, I, I just, I really didn't think that. I just thought at, at, at some point, you know, maybe the rope would get caught or something yeah. would happen that this just like wouldn't be allowed. Well, and it does, they do go there. I mean, it does, that does kind of play out in that it's very, very hard to break one of these barrels yes. and drop the bricks because they're designed not to do that. So right. it is highly unlikely that that would, would happen. So you're, you're right to be doubtful. <laughs> but at the end of the, the day, I mean, they set it up and it, does basically happen not according to plan they do have to do it a few times but i mean it does bust this is one of those myths too where the testing on this is basically we just do it i mean there's not a whole lot to really they they extended it with some our our old pal the shopping montage gotta have that shopping montage. gotta have the shopping montage uh my no sex shop well i don't know about that because they went to that rigging shop that they went to looked like a bondage paradise it could have had a section let's say <laughs> yes a, a a a ask our employees about the back room i don't even know if you need a back room you just need creativity mm. you just need some you w- just need the right mindset <laughs> yes friend. the desire and the mindset That's right. are, will make this into and your we, wildest dreams this will be a a, a, a a i was gonna say a swingers paradise not that type <laughs> Not that type. Well, or potentially that type. Who knows? It was during that section. So they go to the rigging shop. They also went to like a like a um, uh, brickyard, mm-hmm. basically. Where did you notice the name of the guy in the brickyard? By the way, no, is Kevin Smith. Mm. A mason, not a clerk. Different, <laughs> different Kevin Smith. But I just thought that was funny. Uh, but. It was during this section that I is when I first wrote down that, oh, this reminds me of Rocket Car because they're yeah. going around, they're doing the montage and there's pe- the people they're talking to know the myth, mm-hmm. which I thought was so incredibly specific where yeah. they're like, yep, I know the thing where it goes and the bounces and the da da da. And yeah. I was like, oh, I- like, oh, you talking about that lunatune stuff right there. Oh, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. You, you want to be careful about that there lunatune stuff. It'll get you. <laughs> I wish the guy, I wish Kevin Smith had just turned around and been like, yeah, I know about it. Here, I actually have some footage and just put on cartoons. And yeah, in the yeah, corner, yeah. Like, yeah. It's like, now, contrary to popular belief, <laughs> you actually cannot survive an anvil to the face. Okay, I, I, I now I have seen the footage. I have seen the footage. Bud Bunny's fine. All right, you be, you believe Bud Bunny fine. I love that he's just become like I, I say I, I say boy. <laughs> I, 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 yeah. I really did like to when they because this is so straightforward. Like we said, they kind of have to like 
stretch a little bit. And so yeah, they, cut, they yeah, take yeah, it yeah. back to M5. And there was a great shot of just Adam and Jamie playing on the pulley like kids. It so was just good. a wonderfully childlike moment. I just wrote that down. I just, something about it made me happy. There were a why. few of those in, in, in this episode. Yeah. Where it's just like, oh, and this they're one, having fun. And they finally get to drop Buster. We haven't seen that so far. We've only seen Buster once. And he, like we said, he was being blown up. We actually get to see what, in my memory, is, is Buster is falling off of stuff. Not just falling, but being launched first. Yes. <laughs> I mean, that I should have known. I think it was the clothes that did it and the hair there yeah there was something that about they did not explain Buster being fully dressed and watching him very human like just get hoisted like what <laughs> into the air at an alarming speed yes just a, a frightening velocity to be just like sent airborne they do that throughout the episode there's one moment when they're getting him out like on location that they have him in a wheelchair and jamie just pushes it off of a truck oh <laughs> just yeah. doesn't gives no craps about buster so i think that is something that i have either forgotten or it uh it goes away as time progresses but there is an aspect of like, let's beat the crap out of Buster. Oh, yeah. Well, they, <laughs> like they, intentionally like let like we hate Buster. <laughs> they end up building a new Buster that has replaceable parts. What? Yeah. That happens ah. like midway because they blow up this Buster, the original Buster, so much. And see, Cliff, therein lies the question. Oh, it just, it's a bit of a ship of, of, of Theseus situation, is it not? A ship Buster of Buster. Buster Theseus? Yes, a Buster Theseus. Well, <laughs> if you replace all of the parts of Buster, does Buster remain? So here's the funny thing, and I'm, I'm, I'm going to... Is I've, there an answer? Do they have like a? There is. is a, it that is, is it like? Are we on like Buster like ten point? <laughs> that is addressed on the show because it is an argument between Adam and Jamie, and I still remember that, and I'm I'm teasing that now, not knowing okay. how many years it's going to be before we get before, to that. Episode. Okay, well, <laughs> watch it be like season fifteen. Yeah, before it, that, it's happens. the final conversation in the show as yeah. they survey a destroyed earth that has been taken <laughs> over by skynet which jamie jamie invented he did jamie, yeah. jamie turned it on um yeah it's his fault we, we knew we all knew it we all knew it was going to happen but he's so lovable well and 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 you know he's gonna create a terminator <laughs> also it's fine it balances what did you think of the overall? Because again, we don't really have methodology to to go into here. I loved the. We've talked before about how good they are at at making things bigger than they need to be for mm -hmm. visual purposes and camera purposes. What did you think of the testing rig that they made? I thought that was pretty fun. It was awesome because it was just so big. The like, and the like, fake windows and the chimney. Uh, it was what like three or four stories easily yeah. i mean it which again that's why it was so fun watching buster get launched is that it, it was a far way to get launched yes. to go zooming into the air and scaffolding is terrifying to me it always so looks like an erector scary. set it looks like it was constructed by a five-year-old yes. but there's real human adults on it well and most of what i know about scaffolding like the the only time that you hear about scaffolding. It's it's like, oh, it hurt it hurt again. <laughs> it will win and hurt of somebody. Yeah. Yeah. Nobody's ever like, I had a great scaffold experience. Today. You know what? A pleasant scaffold. That's a beautiful though. scaffold. I look, <laughs> if I've said it once, I've said it a million times. Just spruce up your scaffolding a little. <laughs> Some plants, some I, greenery. If I was gonna would it get, kill you, if I was gonna get on a scaffold, honestly, this is not even a joke. Adam and Jamie are probably the two people I would trust the most. So I was, it was actually very cool to see them building it themselves. True, because they're. There is a big thing, and I only know this because of MythBusters and like Adam Savage. There is a big thing in when you're doing that kind of rigging, whether it's theater or whatever else that like, if you, if it's your neck on the line, mm -hmm. you do it. Yeah. You know, that, that, that is like a practice of you check your, your ropes, you check your stuff, you pack your parachute, you know, yeah. that kind of thing. So it, it was, I mean, 
it's one of those things I love about Mythbusters is especially in these early days, it is them doing the stuff. It's very hands-on. They're not just two TV hosts who got hired to come in and point at the thing that the nerds made. They're the nerds. Yeah. <laughs> it's great. They're yeah. the engineers figuring out how to all make this stuff work and putting it together. And, and their process is part of the show, the yeah. entertainment. It's part of the story. And yeah. like the, the, cause the, conflict if you will is they're doing really weird difficult crap yeah <laughs> like how does this work right the crap that 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 to even approach the question of how would we test for this takes yeah. an interesting mind to say the least going back to what i said earlier about how it reminded me of rocket car one of the things that we talked about in those those first couple episodes a lot was Man, I just feel like I'm getting left behind. Like mm -hmm. I just feel like the story is going on. I noticed in this one, and they've been doing it for a few episodes, but I feel like I really noticed it here because it was necessary. And they did it, they especially do this in the second myth, but but here as well, all the pieces to camera of explaining here's what I think is gonna happen, here's what's just happened, here's what we're about to do, mm -hmm. here, you know, cutting to the blueprint graphics that show various things like I always felt on top of this one and yeah. I knew exactly what they were testing for. And they put that image in my head of what this might look like or how this might function. Yeah. And it was, and it looked even better and it looked even better when it actually happened, promised. but it was great. It was like they, their story, they've upped their storytelling game so much so fast. That's what I was saying earlier about. It feels like the pilot just done better. Yes. And you know? also similar to rocket car. Uh, this one ended with, Oh yeah, the uh, it's uh, it, it comes from this and is completely untrue. Even though you like at the saw very, it work very end, perfectly, yeah. yeah. I just saw Buster get busted. Yeah, <laughs> yes. And now you're telling me this myth is busted. Yeah, uh, it's one of those things. I mean, we'll we'll get there in possible. a minute when we actually talk about the verdict. But it is one of those things of like, I kept asking myself, okay, if this never happened, mm -hmm. why is it so? specifically explained you know what i mean like <laughs> yeah. it was, i i think i had I think i said the same thing with um the biscuit bazooka yeah it's like no i i don't know if anybody would have made this up with that level of specificity it's, like it's I'm a sure lot it, of details yeah i'm sure it, the myth can grow over time but like mm. this kind of feels like something like this happened. like there's got to be some elements of truth here yeah yeah, yeah. and where Perhaps is some that? stories got combined you know it was really crazy when they started to actually do the test and the freaking uh, pipe that is supporting all the weight starts bending from the weight of all the bricks. It was terrifying. I I was like weirdly nervous, like knowing full well that they were going to fix it. I was like, fellas. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Do yeah. you know about this? Yeah. Have you noticed? Yeah. Guys. <laughs> and you saw it. It's always nerve wracking. It's like when you're when you're a kid and like your parents get worried, you get worried. When yeah. you see Jamie being yeah, like, "Ah, oh, we gotta, uh, we, we gotta deal with this." Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's like, uh oh, uh oh, uh oh. <laughs> when the stash is worried, we should all be worried. It's time. It's time to worry. It's time to panic. Yeah, yeah. They did end up in the end really having to kind of put a lot of work into making this work as well as it did in terms True. of weakening the barrel. But I thought that everything they did, there's sometimes that they will do things where they're weakening something and you're like, why would it be like that? But right. everything they did here, I could see an old barrel yeah. lands on a board when it falls. You end up putting like a knife edge board on the ground, which helped it break. Mm -hmm. um, you know, that has bands that have fallen off or it's just old and not being held together too well. I, I buy all of that. It's plausible. <laughs> if only, if only that was a word that existed in 2003. <laughs> As opposed to being coined, of course, in 2008. What were they going to do? Call And they needed to call Webster or somebody, whoever does the dictionary. Well, that's just not plausible. <laughs> but it is. I mean, we, we've been, we, we kind of um, already said this uh, from the beginning, but it works precisely. Yeah. I mean, when the barrel breaks, it goes up, it hits him in midair, he hits the ground, barrel comes back down, it's hits Buster on the head. Beautiful. It's everything it's you beautiful. want to see. He gets bonked <laughs> twice. It, 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 it again. It's so fast. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> just and zip. violent. <laughs> yes. Oh my gosh. It was just what? Like it it it, it has a very uh uh 
<laughs> like shepherd's crook feel to it. Yeah. Like, <laughs> like being just like jerked in one direction very, very fast. It's always funny, man. It's always funny. It's always funny watching just something unexpectedly fast happen. It's great. Yeah, especially, yeah, like you said earlier, cartoon brought to life. Like, that is exactly how this feels, and it's just wonderful. Straight out of the Acme factory. So we, we, we've we hit the verdict, but to, to dig into that for a second, I wrote down, Jamie, what Jamie says is conceivable. Mm. But they then go back to the research and say, yeah, but there's no record of this ever actually happening. And we're right back in rocket car territory. And it's, it is or no, very, this, this is the one that had a, the record of it is from a joke book. Well, yeah, that's true. Yeah. So from 1912. Yeah. Which like, it's such a weird thing to pull. It's such a I, weird flat ending, you it know, is. every time, like, I love this myth, but you're right. Like you get to the end and it's like, okay, I just saw it happen. Why are we talking I about I saw this? it happen, but no, it was mentioned in a joke book this one time in 1912, and therefore it is it is impossible. It's like, yeah, chickens have crossed roads. Yeah. <laughs> there are things in joke books that did really happen. Busted. People Ain't no chicken <laughs> never crossed a road. That's, a, that's from a joke, man. Chickens can't cross roads. You knocked on my door like 20 minutes ago. We know these things happen. We... we we know. Oh, you call me a chicken? <laughs> no, it's a knock knock joke. Oh, that's fine. You turned into Marty McFly all of a sudden. <laughs> yeah. Nobody. <laughs> nope. <laughs> Leave it. I feel like with this kind of thing, we almost need to dub our, or come up with our own in in the the world where there is no plausible. We need a term for these myths that it's like it can happen. Okay. But it didn't actually. You right, know what I mean? Like right. fictional, but physical. <laughs> Physically, okay. you know, okay. a physics says yes. History says no. Like what What would be uh, plausible? I mean, that is. I guess they got it. They got, they got it. They, 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 they did get it right eventually, didn't they? The first they? time. Yeah. yeah they, they did it. Um, We're just too far ahead of them. No, it it, it it is just. You would think that they would have thought that far ahead you know right. that, that that there might be another possibility other than up or down <laughs> yeah um, yeah yeah it's a thumb in the middle that they're missing right now that's 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 right cliff <laughs> and aren't we all <laughs> uh, this is where they did go back and did it again just for fun they even say on the I episode did, did, did. <laughs> like I loved it's, that. it's fun to drop stuff so we're gonna do it again and this is where they actually break buster for the first time which is a a, a wonderful milestone it's in the history not of the show a small break no like, like break his dead. hand yeah. <laughs> He's done for, like his chest implodes. And I, I love the narrator is like, well, he was made for yeah, you know, being yeah, in a yeah. crash test. He in was a car. born to die. <laughs> <laughs> but he's like, he, he has is, fulfilled his glorious purpose. But he almost makes it sound like, well, he was made to be in the safety of a car wreck. And it's like, yeah. what? <laughs> like, what a wuss, am I right? He was supposed to be in the sweet, loving arms <laughs> of one of the most violent things a human regularly experience the mother's embrace of a head-on yeah. collision <laughs> a 60 mile per hour death race it won't haunt him forever <laughs> don't worry he has no soul <laughs> it's fine he can't think <laughs> i gotta say that looks like it hurt Myth number two. Number two. Except it's actually number one because we're pissing on the third rail. <laughs> oh! Uh, which is odd that that is what IMDb calls it because I noticed that they uh, bleeped piss. Yeah. I guess maybe that's the difference between <laughs> 2003 and 2024. I don't know. Yeah, we'll see. We'll see if, if, if uh, piss makes it into the episode. I don't know. And not only did they bleep piss mm -hmm. they they have to put a fig leaf over a fake wang for many close-up shots tasteful tasteful my only note is that it's supposed to be a fig leaf but besides that besides that i respect the breadth of the joke i respect 
the fact that not a lot of attention is drawn to it. Uh, Cliff, overall, I, I'd give this about an 8 out of 10. This is just a good, solidly executed joke, this little leaf. Yeah, it's fantastic. And I actually have a couple of things I want to talk about with that fig leaf before we get there. But I should, I should set us up. Uh, the myth here is essentially, can you be electrocuted by peeing on the third rail of a subway? <laughs> they have an actual story that they tell of a guy who was drunk in the New York subway system and there was found dead and a apparently had peed on the third rail and been electrocuted actually how, killed how 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 <laughs> who determines that like i know i will get into that later but like yeah. my immediate question is how how does the coroner go well fellas i think this is an open and shot case i actually have an answer for you on that Ooh. so they mention um, we're jumping ahead but they did mention a name and they actually say <laughs> thought this was another great doctor with the moment where she's like yeah so this is basically a racist <laughs> yeah, joke yeah, yeah 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 about an irishman named joseph patrick o'malley and i looked it up <laughs> there was a book i believe from the 1960s where this story kind of originates and in it they oh. say that a guy was found dead in the new york subway system and uh, it was believed he had been hit by a train based okay. on his injuries, and that's what he killed him. But when the coroner actually did an autopsy or, or did an examination, they found Was that his PP fried? His, his PP, and it said specifically thumb and uh, 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 forefinger were also singed, leading to the determination... Because he was holding it. No, I... <laughs> I'm more questioning the. It's being very thumb and. <laughs> I'm trying to think of. I appreciate you not, not doing no, any I'm testing. No, 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 Robert. I'm just trying to listener. If you would like to imagine, I'm testing <laughs> this as a. I'm just trying to imagine. Do what your is own the research. Natural way. <laughs> yeah. Do try this at home. Yes. So, but that was apparently their determination was that he had somehow been electrocuted and it was believed that it was from peeing on the third rail. And then he was hit by a train. Well, yeah, as, as, as one does that, that, <laughs> that would be big news. Well, it does lend credence to the first guy they talked to with, uh, uh, New York city transit. <laughs> I just loved, he says, oh, first day on the job. This is the first thing they tell you. Don't piss on the third rail. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> a can we just say a sarcastically New York man? Right. Well, oh, first day on the job. <laughs> I was, that was like, a bad New York accent, but you I, know, you, it, it, it's thick. I'm just imagining like spare a thought for that onboarding meeting. You know I, what I mean? Or just like, I mean, welcome, welcome. Take your seat. I'll call your attention to our first topic. Uh, can you die from taking a yeah. leak? Yeah, 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 yeah. The answer will shock you. Rule number. <laughs> Thank you. Thank now, you. Be I'll be here all episode. When did you write that? This afternoon. Okay, that's fine. <laughs> that's that. That's some good. That's I just I wanted assurance that like. You hadn't slept on it. And then, you know what I mean? Like that's I was hoping you were gonna say, I want assurance you hadn't just come up with that on the fly because it was so clever. And more you're like, because I hope you didn't <laughs> have time to come up with that particular joke. Because if you did, um <laughs> I I I it would be big news, and it should be big news, because anytime that you have people dropping from public health crises like peeing on rails someone's got to look into it cliff i do feel like though it's one of those things you know we've had that with a couple of myths we talked about that last week with like the breast implants of like we would have heard about this yeah this one i don't necessarily feel but that people way. had heard about it well i mean in terms of to like the, to, to 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 it has risen to the point where in official Frickin' uh, uh, training materials, yeah. essentially. I'm just saying, like, from a public perspective, like, people get hit by trains, people do die on the train tracks all the yeah. time. It doesn't, at a passing glance, go like, oh, that's another thing to work. That's another reason not to screw around on the subway. Like, I, I could understand this actually being a thing and people not necessarily knowing about it. I, I know not to touch the third rail. Yeah. Like, I know, I know... I feel like most subway systems make like a pretty big to do yeah. <laughs> over over that particular thing. But yeah. it I mean it does surprise me that the guy, 
that <laughs> runs like the subway in New York. It's like, oh, first day, first day. I th- 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 there's nothing else to cover. Subway on 101. The first day. Don't piss on yeah, the third yeah, rail. Yeah, don't piss on the third rail. Everybody knows this. Number two, pack a lunch. Well. And number three is don't piss on the third rail again. <laughs> because, you know, third rail, three, it makes sense. I love the methodology of this myth. Yes. I thought from a testing perspective, and they, they break it down early on, they, they really lay this out. But the whole idea, they got to make a human analog, which we've seen them do, but this right. has to have the same electrical properties as the human body. Yes, it does. Then they have to make it be. Yeah. Then they have to electrify a third rail and make it happen. They broke it, it broke it down early on so well and laid out this process. I was just hooked. I was just like, whatever yeah. happens, no matter how ridiculous this may seem or not. And I'm if in. it works, like a, a hook releases and he falls out again in cartoonish fashion. So <laughs> just good. Like, Falls over fried and so dead. When they first showed the like switch that was going to be activated if he got a deadly amount of, you know, of uh, current running through the the dummy, mm-hmm. I was like, oh, that's kind of a non visual way to because it was like yeah. they had a close up of the switch and a box just going like tick. tick. And, and yeah, I was like, yeah, yeah. Oh, that's not. And then when they actually get out to the test and they have it rigged to knock him over, it, oh my God, so good. It, it, and also. Something about the image of somebody being fried and just like a board, just yeah, yes. it, oh, it's like Home Alone kind of stuff too. Again, like the first one, it's just like ah, this is textbook like fun, like Buster Keaton style, like slapstick violence. You know, it does. We, one of the things about Mythbusters, something that you know we we're playing with in, in, in how we do the show and our artwork and all that kind of stuff, is that there was such a like visual world of it. It had not occurred to me how much of that was very cartoon influenced. Like yes. it was like bringing a comic book to life in some of the things that they would do, and they often did things that they didn't have. They didn't have to decorate that scaffold in the last myth. They don't have to do any of this but, <laughs> but, <laughs> but no, I, I see what you're saying like, but like if you're just making because it, they're doing it they're like well we're just gonna do it up to 11 yeah and i mean we haven't seen a whole lot of it yet but we're gonna get to like adam costumes yes. and like the all the cinematography that they would do to make it feel like they really did go above and beyond to make this like world and that is so well contained and represented in this myth with the the just the falling over mechanism. It's so simple, but it's great. Yeah. There was a scene. Did you did you notice this? I just wrote down. I don't know what the hell is happening. So they they set up their methodology and what's gonna happen. And they're just like in between, it's just like a cutaway as they're going to the next thing. Mm-hmm. And it's just Adam with the water hose somewhere Mm -hmm. it is not a location that we see anywhere else in this myth Mm -mm. he's just off by himself in some yard thing pretending to pee with this water hose and this dude comes up and like interrupts him yeah and adam just like very brief is like oh god and then they cut away and never talk about it not once what the hell was that i guess he was like uh, running the line that was going to be what the P was running in, but like, it's never addressed. It just, it, it, it And we're it, like not visually at that part yet either. So no, it just like No, and happens. it's also, it, well, it's also unclear initially because of the way that it's shot. It is initially unclear, except from the, you know, it's, it's a pretty, it's a pretty heavy stream. Yeah. It's unclear whether or not he is actually just peeing. They're just showing us, Adam peeing. And yet another time, there's a lot of pee. I did not remember the amount the of pee in Mythbusters. There's a lot of pee in the show. A lot of pee. A lot of their pee. Yeah. I like that they're putting their own piss on the line. That's <laughs> that's a sign of uh, craftsmanship, of ownership. Well, it's like we were saying about the rigging. Oh. <laughs> you you, you got to put your piss on the line. You got to put your own piss on the line. That's day two. That's day two That's of the day, onboarding yeah, session. Day two, don't piss on the rail. Day three. No, that's day one. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> I go home for the day. <laughs> Tomorrow's the first day, actually. Tomorrow's the first day. 
<laughs> hey, don't pee on no rails on your way out. <laughs> Jesus, these kids. But they're uh, going to be all right. They've got good hearts. He's, this guy's getting older the longer you go. Oh, he's getting he's getting a bit of weathered. <laughs> and a bit tired. Uh, the accent's all over the place, but uh, I like it. I, I just really wouldn't have, you know, I've talked about Mythbusters a lot over the years as my favorite show. Mm -hmm. Something that was never in my description is that it was like 20% pee. <laughs> that was never in my, I didn't, I... I didn't have that in my point. If my, we my... are breaking it down compositionally, <laughs> if we are giving the chemical makeup <laughs> of Mythbusters, I certainly did not anticipate 20% going to urine in particular. It is funny, Yet though. here we are. <laughs> here we are. It is funny, though, that aside, or, or jokes aside on that, like, one of the first things I wrote down was just like, this is the makings of a classic Mythbusters myth, because yeah. it's ridiculous mm -hmm. it's a little bit gross mm -hmm. uh but it actually has a lot of like good scientific testable basis to and it and it's impeccably well shot yes. that's the funniest yeah. part to yeah. me is that i was just like was well, this gonna be that it like <laughs> watching it in slow mo like the quirk come out and just like the pee, the steady stream just shooting out from behind the, the little leaf. Somebody went to film Ooh. school for that. It's great. Yes, they did. And somebody needs an Emmy. Perhaps you can spare one. <laughs> <laughs> I, it's yeah. I mean, it's like I another wrote that another note that I wrote down was they build a peeing rig. What other show would do that? What other show? Listener, you name me the other show. And put a lot of thought into, like, Adam goes into the bathroom and times how long it takes him to pee. And so then he has to match that to the flow. He gets the flow rate right. Like, <laughs> it's crazy how much time and, and detail goes into this. It's yeah. awesome. Yeah. I, I, this was, this was, these first two myths, I think, have been two of my favorites of the show so far. Yeah. You know, I wrote, when, when I wrote down my overall thoughts, I had a moment of like, is this is this one of my favorite episodes so yeah. far? And I I didn't I wasn't able to go quite that far, but now that we're talking about it, it might be. Yeah. Like I might be it coming around. It was just around. satisfying. And and like it went really quickly because I I just every few minutes I was like, <laughs> yes. Yeah. He went shooting into the air. <laughs> P. <laughs> This episode did raise, or this myth in particular, raised a really important question that I have to ask you. Mm. If you are, let's say that you are sealing a container that is going to hold gallons of liquid. Right. Would your methodology be duct tape? No, but my methodology would also not be glue, which is which is apparent. Like Jamie's like, you idiot, why didn't you glue it? And I was like, I liquid. Ah, I yeah. I was like, I mean, I know. So they they did they used a vacuum form machine to make the mold that they were gonna pour the body into, and so which was awesome. So why could they not vacuum? Why couldn't they? Do it all together? Well, I guess it's like the way, specifically a vacuum form machine, it presses down so you can't get like a complete shape. It's not oh. like a molded, I would I would think. So it, I, but I was on the same page of like, why wouldn't you just make this complete? Yeah. And then fill it up that way. I, but yeah, Adam tries to fill it up and it just goes, I love what I loved. And this, again, going back to the cartooniness of this episode, this wasn't even intentional cartooniness. He, f he fills up the legs. They obviously start to leak. Everywhere. So, th so they put it in a trash can and the trash can leaks. Yes. So <laughs> then like, their solution is to just get an intern to go get a crap ton of ice. Yes. <laughs> yes. And it works. And it works. And it so works. Somehow. And I this, guess I made it congeal faster. Yeah, they but... just set the ballistics gel a lot faster. They oh. didn't, you know, I was surprised they didn't go back to that uh, deli full of prisoners, 
where they where they I'm, get their first batch of ballistics gel. I'm surprised that they didn't just shoot the ballistics gel for the hell of it. <laughs> like, why not? <laughs> we got it. Yeah. Although they, they showed shots from the previous episode, just like the rippling. <laughs> it's yeah. It's always so, so gnarly. Satisfying. It's so gnarly. This is where we did get when they actually make the peeing rig and they they have it all set up. This is where we get our digital fig leaf. Yes. Which suggests to me that at some point is digital. That yeah, that's oh, like a, that. oh, it's like clip art bad. And it suggests to me that at some point they thought it was not going to be a problem because they're like, it's just tubing. We're just putting a tube between the legs. And some sensor had to be like, nope, that's penis. I, even still, that sensor's not a bad guy in my book. (laughs) Like, I still, it's still very funny to put, like, fig leaf over, over, man. It's It's funny every time. It's a great creative choice to not blur it. Yes. Like there was obviously a conversation of like, now nah, we're not just going to blur. It. Yeah. We got to make this funny. We actually, we got to pay this off somehow. Digital fig leaf. Bill, do you still have that uh, JPEG of the, <laughs> yeah, yeah. The fig leaf. <laughs> you got that? Can you send that over to me? <sighs> no reason. Garden of Eden dot PNG. No re- <laughs> 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 oh no this isn't gonna no it's not a clear background no it's doing the checker thing oh, it's a, you, did you rip this off of google you ripped this off of google adam shane covering dot jpg <laughs> uh yeah i mean again just and then my next note was peeing slow-mo with fig leaf because <laughs> they just it immediately great big old close-up going in it but they have to great. cover it anyway and that's some that's a mighty powerful stream. They got back in here the 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 great storytelling the way that it played out. They did three main tests, changing the variables each time. It's just yep. it's a great progression, great build. You feel like you're there the whole time. But basically, it seems pretty clear that in under any normal circumstances, this would not work. They try oh. wetting the ground. They try taking the shoes off. <laughs> Adam at one point is like stumbling or stumbling around in the rain, <laughs> drunk, shoeless, being on the third rail. Yeah, they do everything they can to make it work uh, within reason, and this just doesn't work. Which and, honestly, well, I, I, I thought it what, would. I definitely thought that it would be easier because what finally knocks them over is like six inches away. Yes, and. Did they do something to the pee or? Well, they they find out. He has out, to be barefoot. He has to be barefoot, but they also find out that part of the problem, and this was <laughs> as gross as it is, what a great use of the high-speed camera. The, the stream was not a continuous stream. It was breaking into droplets, and so the current couldn't. Of course. <laughs> yeah. The current couldn't race all the way back up. And Buster, that was causing a we're problem. going to need to steady a stream, old boy. <laughs> well, I'm actually surprised you forgot that bit because Adam delights in showing the camera that they're going to switch to a larger tube. Oh. Did you notice the sound effect? No. It's a horse. When he shows the bigger tube, it's well, like a horse braying. Again. What a great job. Pretty pretty good editing here. I, I, I've i really got to give the editing props all it's around. Like, it, you, I could feel the, like, mischievousness yes. <laughs> throughout the whole thing. Yeah. Of like, aha, we're going to get away with this. We're going to, yeah. we, we all know what we're doing. We know what we're talking well, and about. And then here. also, like, the editor's watching this footage of people having fun and then they themselves having fun. Yes. And now we get to have fun. Yeah, they're watching it weeks later in Australia yeah. trying to figure all this out, not getting to actually that's a, be there. That right, That's a horse penis joke right there for you. <laughs> it also... Put that one in your kit. It also led to the same problem, led to a pretty inspirational moment for me, something that I'm going to carry forth in life. Yeah. Whenever you don't know what to do, just think of the advice of one Jamie Heineman. The only thing we have left is to try a larger stream of urine. I mean, what else do you have? It's all we have left. It's all we have left in this world. We have exhausted every resource, every opportunity. But see, I find it inspirational because things may be rough, but there's always a larger stream of urine. That that, that much we can hang on to. <laughs> 
can really we can really soak that in. But they do finally get it to work. As you said, it's the bigger stream. It's the wet ground. It's everything. And he's inches from the rail to actually make it arc all the way back. <laughs> and it does trigger. And we finally get to see Buster fall over or not. It's, this isn't Buster. This is like a proto Buster kind of thing. But yeah. we get to see the, the dummy fall over. And it's really satisfying to, to actually see the test work. But it is. they ultimately say that this is busted because it's just so impractical and unlikely to make it happen. And they they go back to saying once more, and there's no record of it, yeah. which it still feels weird to me. But in this one, at least, like I said, we were, we were there for every step of the way and we knew why. Even if we saw a result, that yeah. result is so impractical as to not be worth saying you could actually do this. Yeah. Only thing that could have made it better is some uh, some smoke just like came off of him after he got <laughs> buzzed and like came off. Like, I'd say that's a myth busted. Not that I'd be peeing on the third rail anytime soon. Hey! Oh! Myth number three. Number eel, three. Eel skin wallet. So, this one was really tacked on. It was, <laughs> but it was so. Even though it was pretty interesting. Yeah. The The question here is, can an eel skin wallet demagnetize a credit card? So essentially the story is, and they even say that this dates to 1986, uh, which I think becomes important as we go along. But the, the reports came out that there were problems with credit cards due to wallets being made from the skin of electrified eels. <laughs> And that the skin itself still carried a charge, and that was demagnetizing credit cards. So Have you ever heard of this? I didn't even no. remember this this myth. I don't remember anything about this. Most things that we've encountered so far, I at least remember that being like, oh, that was in the culture. I remember that. Being yeah. Talking. No memory of this. I I the only thing that I have memories of and still happens is people all the time saying like all the myriad things that will demagnetize your card. Like, yes. Don't put it next to your phone. Don't blah, 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 blah. But <laughs> in eel skin wallet. And no. that's, that's actually what got, so this is another one of those where at the very beginning I was like, Oh, this is dumb. Like yeah. there's no part of this that makes sense. And then I realized pretty quickly, okay, actually this myth is about credit cards. Yes. This is actually about, demagnetizing credit cards and the eel skin wallet thing is just a framework for them to get in and do some really cool testing and, and explore something which even in 2003, I feel like, I mean, today there's questions about it. Like you said, people go tell you not to put your card in your phone and blah, blah, yeah. blah. So especially in 2003, I imagine there were a lot of questions out there and people didn't really know. And so it's a great thing to walk through that has a lot of really interesting testable elements to it yeah. that they just put within this framework, even though the base story was pretty ridiculous. Yeah. Um, it's also wild that we still have this technology and rely on it regularly. Yes. That was in the back of my mind the entire time. I was like, 20 years on, huh? And 20 years on. And, and still... like how easy it was in 2003 for them to like replicate, basically make their own credit card company on a laptop and M5. There, there was that, <laughs> but I, I was also somewhat comforted by how difficult it ended up proving to mess up the cards. Yeah. I mean, like the level of magnetation required to move the stuff to where the card is unreadable is significant. It did piss me off a little bit for all the times I've had hotel room keys stop working. And oh I was like, gosh, I was, yeah, I was like, seriously, you hold this thing to a super powered electromagnet and it doesn't do anything. But like I walk upstairs in the hotel and it's like, I don't feel like, it. I don't know what you want me to do. I don't know. I, I, I have one job and I don't want to do it. This door right here. <laughs> Not this store right here. I can't, right I can't. Here. I don't go to this store. No. I don't. Have you tried another door? <laughs> <laughs> Have you tried walking in on somebody today? Because that's Have what we're going to do. Have you tried checking out? I think we should just check We out. should just leave. We, we should, should just leave. Just it's leave. not working. We should just leave. It's a, it's a wash. It's a wash. Call it. We did get to meet in this episode another great character ah. in the pantheon of Mythbusters, someone that I know we talked about off mic. I know yes. you were quite a fan on yes. name was, his name was Dr. John McCosker. Oh really? Yes. Oh, I didn't catch that because as I recall, his name was John McCosker is Dr. Eel. He just loves them. 
<laughs> he just loves them. I, I love that. Doesn't that feel like, like it would be on the cover of like a 1950s comic book? Yes, like Dr. Yeah. Eel. He just, he loves, just them. loves them. He can't get enough of them. <laughs> he gets an eel and he wants more. <laughs> like I, I love how much the narrator loves Dr. Eels. Yes. Eels. Another great, sh- let's give another shout out to Robert Lee, the narrator. On this episode, he did a lot of heavy lifting of like puns yeah. and just little jokes and little things all throughout being very wink wink about some of the things that they were doing going back to the, uh, the ping Step myth. on the goss. Yeah. All that kind of stuff. He does such a good job because it's like if you were to write all that down, like look at that on a page, it's some pretty pretty dry pretty dry not great stuff no. and he really makes it sing i choose that fat such a great part of the show no. i just i i always want to give that guy credit because i feel like he didn't you know people don't think of him as one of the Mythbusters, but he totally is yeah uh i do like that dr eel is essentially just bill nye the science guy yes uh but just and and the narrator is not wrong. He does just love them. Like the and guy he's got gets a bunch giddy. of them. Yeah. Like, but when he pulls them out, he's like, <laughs> like I mean, he's just like really weirdly stoked. About and just these like things. digging into a jar of formaldehyde and be like, this one's my favorite. Yeah. And just it's like, this dead- look at this hideous mother trucker. I love them. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. The first one he pulls out is. That's Massive. a big cuss. That thing is terrifying. I hate it. Weird ocean snake. <laughs> I don't like this. No. And also because it's like re- old, you, you can't re- it's like you can't really tell where it begins or ends, you know? Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. it's just this amorphous to our, ocean snake. To Whoa. our question earlier about like have you did, had you ever heard of this? Like he actually says Oh no, like people called my office because they were worried about like is the eel skin wallet messing with my he's like he's the guy. Yeah. He was like, Hi, Dr. Eel's office. Yeah, I mean I guess Ah, if, another one, eh? If you have an eel question, I guess Dr. Eel is the only place you're gonna go. Dr. Eel speaking. Yeah, <laughs> Dr. Eel speaking. And like so You've it, got Dr. Eel, go. And it's apparently it's so weird because again, I've never heard anything close to this no but when they buy an eel skin wallet to do the testing it includes a warning or 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 a a disclaimer yes oh it's wild that was so crazy to me it is it is similar to the cell phone thing uh with the gas station it it did it, it was just like oh this might be a weird example of like culture conforming to this whether or not it's true exactly <laughs> like and clearly like for the for the company to do that they must have felt like threatened like yeah. people must have genuinely been like i'm not buying those wallets cuz this is going to happen to me yeah it's crazy well it's also it, i i think a lot about like how that kind of stuff affects marketing um oh yeah where it's just like anything that has just like a giant banner on it automatically that's like this isn't this i just need you to know it isn't this i know what you're thinking yeah not poisonous not poisonous it's fine (laughs) promise nine out of ten dentists suggest camel cigarettes (laughs) yeah it's so they they pivot pretty quickly away from the eels, even though that becomes a that that's a continuing theme, but they really get into we let's get a bunch of different wallets. Let's test all the different ways that this might actually happen. And that's yeah. like I said, I, that's where I I kind of was like ah okay, <laughs> and make a credit card company in M five. Yep, just on the fly. It's not disconcerting at not all. Not not one bit to know that that's possible. Fine. And they even they even talk about that eel skin wallets aren't even made of eels. It's from a completely different critter called a hagfish. So there's just no, (laughs) Who you would think Dr. Eel wouldn't be into as, as a a pretty staunch eel man, but it turns out he loves those little guys too. I don't know, man. He talks some crap about the hagfish. He talks some crap, but then he immediately turns around and talks about how much, and when he takes them down to see the live ones, which is also like, something i don't want to spend too much time on because it will make me gag like (laughs) these things are these things are sarcastically slimy yes like not just like oh that's a little bit of slime it's like 
Oh, you're mostly slime. You're just goo. You're, you're like mostly 80% goo. goo, 20% weird giant tadpole. Yeah. Ooh. And they just like, I do love, again, those weird places that Mythbusters takes you that nowhere else would, where they're just like, they're yeah, in this the, room. The layer of Dr. Eel. The layer of Dr. Eel where he's just like, I happen to have some right over here. Right. So they they take us into the room from The Amazing Spider-Man 2 where yes. Jamie Foxx gets powers. <laughs> yes. That's the room that we're in. <laughs> Just a tank of hagfish. It was actually like I found myself being really tense when Jamie drops one and it's like about to wiggle through the grate. On a grate. It's <laughs> on top of the grate. What? Like, and Dr. Eel's just standing there like, that's one of mine. Yeah, please, please get it. It's one of my eels. If it ends up in the sewer, it's going to learn karate and everything's going to go crazy. I'm Dr. Eel and that's one of mine. <laughs> No, I like him. I, he's my favorite. He is my favorite. It's yeah. I, the, the whole the whole sequence is so funny of this <laughs> strange imaginarium of eel and hagfish and weirdness I love that they go him. through. They they did get into something that I will. I'll be honest. I thought there was going to be more truth to this. Was the magnetic clasp on the wallet? And I yeah. because I have. When I've purchased wallets, I used to have a wallet that had a money clip on the back of it. And I'm mm -hmm. pretty sure I remember it coming with a card that was like, don't put your credit cards under the clip. Like, it's fine if it's they're, they're on the other side of the wallet, but like, yeah. don't clip them here because it could mess up the card. I totally had in my head, and maybe that, maybe that does speak to the basis of this myth. I totally had in my head, like, that's a bad thing. You shouldn't do that. Yeah, I think that's more a case of like, it's not happening, but they've still got to cover their butts anyway. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Like that, that, because they end up testing the amount of, uh, mag, magnetation, magnetism, magnetism, <laughs> the level of magnetism, like required to mess it up. And yeah. it, it's so much. It's intense. It's a, yeah. yeah. <laughs> like it's, it's like an industrial magnet. Yeah. And like magnets like that are, terrifying in what they can do like it's yeah. an electromagnet with a switch and like i kind of it's like something from like the third act of an avengers movie like i'm expecting him to click it on and just m5 crumples into yeah, the magnet yeah, all yeah, of a sudden yeah, yeah. it's terrifying it was interesting and i didn't initially understand it but they i think they explained it well when they're testing with the magnet they put the cards on the magnet flat mm -hmm. first and it doesn't demagnetize the cards until they lift the card and wave it over and run it through the magnetic field yeah that i never would have thought, thought about that that's that. what it was doing that they explain that it's pulling through the field that actually pulls them the the particles on the card apart and yeah. demagnetize it's crazy like i never would have that didn't occur to me at all that that would be such a thing and it made me wonder and i guess they kind of did this but it made me wonder like oh so are there other things that are similar to that of like, yes. if you're up close to it, it's not a problem. But if you do this other thing, it is, it oh. seemed like kind of a hole there of like, Oh, that actually makes me have more questions about how this might work. See my immediate question or what I want to do is like run a cassette through the field. And oh like, man. And like yeah. See how that like warps it. Yeah. That would be interesting. And then listen to it. Yeah. Yeah. It, don't have them. Yeah. Give you a devil message. There it feels like there's a whole lot of myths they could do with magnets specifically. You get a, you get like a, a message from Joseph Smith that way. <laughs> That's a little Mormons and magnets joke for the kids at home. <laughs> it's my favorite store, Mormons and Magnets. Mine too. Um but ultimately, I mean, everything that they do, they test other household objects, including a cat's ass magnet. Notice that. Everything is fine. Everything turns I mean, out to be like, fine. I mean, like, that's, like, they really try a lot of stuff. Until... And even, a lot of reasonable stuff. A lot yeah. of stuff that they're like, yeah. now this is something that you could actually come into contact with yeah. in your daily life. Microwaves and yeah. all sorts of stuff yeah. like that. Yeah. Makes perfect sense. They even actually go back. This was really cool. Even though it's like, you know, it's not going to work. It's worth seeing. And actually put a card in a tank with a live electric eel. <laughs> did you notice how giddy Dr. Eel was I about did. the fact that that eel had, as he said, caused some workers comp problems? Yes. 
Yeah. He just like, he yep, they like, got shocked, fell back, hit their head. <laughs> he's my favorite. <laughs> he's a little dangerous. <laughs> I was like, I doctor you. And then immediately it's like cut to Adam on a ladder, like hanging yeah, over this. Dangling a card. Dangling a card on the end of a stick into this thing. I was like, oh my God. That's it, Adam. Don't worry about my eel. <laughs> he's a little dangerous it was so great and like the eel they never really said if they if the eel actually put out a shock but they never detected anything <laughs> uh around the card especially yeah. nothing anywhere near strong enough to actually demagnetize it in the end so this no one, but i'm glad like that was a worthless experiment but, at the end but yes. i'm so glad that they included it Again, another one of those, like, it's not the science, it's the entertainment. That's right. And the entertainment's fantastic. And this is a Looney Tunes episode, so we've got to have some zappy eels. But this one was ultimately well and truly busted. I feel like this one, yeah. out of anything on the episode, this was super definitive. Maybe more than yeah. most of the myths we've seen so far on the show. I would definitely say so. It felt so. very exhaustive. The way that they tested it felt great. Um, yeah, I loved everything about this one. This yeah. and it's another one of those. I'm I'm coming to find, and I I wouldn't have made this prediction going into the show, that my favorite myths are the small ones. Yeah, I'm the really, ones that are either like sandwiched in the middle or like tacked on the end. Totally, and especially these ones like going back to Leaping Lawyer, where they're not. It's about the process, not yeah. necessarily the question itself. I'm finding I love that even more than the big crazy ones, which I never would have anticipated. It's an interesting part of the rewatch of seeing like this is where they really, to me, it feels like it's where they really kind of strut their stuff. Yeah. And what they can do as a show is it's like, oh, well, we're going to strap rockets to a car. We yeah. can make, that's, that's easy to make interesting, but watch us make credit cards and electric eels fascinating for 20 well, minutes. Or and whatever. these are the parts that I don't remember, you know, Same. that, that like yeah. I haven't seen a million clips of on YouTube since. So it's great. I'm, I'm, I'm glad to be back and rewatching. It. And to that point that you just made, it also, we, we talk, we've talked about this numerous times, but it also belies that myth of like, no pun intended, of like, oh, that's the show where stuff blew up. Yeah. You know, and if that was your takeaway from Mythbusters, man, that was that was really not the point. Mm -mm. Is that that is like to that part is, of it. That is the cherry on the top of the icing on the yes, very yeah, tip yeah, yeah, of the yeah, cupcake, yeah. right? Yeah. Like, yeah, that stuff is fun and it's eye catching, but man, it's not the meat. This is the this it's is the, the substance. That's the sizzle. This is the steak, that's you right. know, and the steak is so good. Yeah. I'm like now that we're at this part of the show, when I was going through my notes earlier today, I was like, is is the podcast going to be boring now that we just like the show? <laughs> now that uh, everything's good? Listener, let, let us know. know. Let us know. <laughs> is the podcast boring now? They're like, it Hashtag was, podcast boring. They're like, it was always boring, guys. We, oh, we just, you know, we got... No, we had some good ones. <laughs> I'm sure of it. <laughs> And we'll have another good one next week. Thank wow. you for teaming me up for that. That was perfect. <laughs> there We're is. getting better as podcasters. Next <laughs> week, we'll be talking about uh, season one, episode seven. The myths are Penny Drop, Deadly Microwaves, and Radio Tooth Fillings. I'm stoked for it. I saw Penny Drop like on the, uh, like it was like coming up next. Yeah. And I considered going ahead and watching it because I don't remember and uh, it's one yeah. of those that, like, I know everything about the physics around it, and I'm still like, I, but I don't recall what. I'm just going to tease this now, and we'll get back to it next week. But I remember there's a very specific scientific concept that I learned from the penny drop myth. Mm. And I still, to this day, there's a certain scientific term that when I hear it, I go like, Right, the penny is yeah. Ah, right, uh, okay, in Mythbusters. Ah, terminal velocity. It is yeah, stuck in my. It actually it is. is you, son of <laughs> <laughs> you totally got it. All right, we'll get into it next week. But yeah, that is how stuck in my head Mythbusters is, and I'm so I am also very excited to see that next week. Come back and join us, puppies. <laughs> we'll see you then. Try This at Home is produced by Slugline Media. The show was written, hosted, edited, and shot onto the internet by Cliff Bumgardner and Harrison Stewart. Our music is by the mysterious Breakmaster Cylinder. You can follow the show on Instagram at trythispod or email us, trythisathomepod at gmail.com. 